Are your container images, or what some call Docker images, based on Debian, Ubuntu, CentOS, or some other traditional Linux distribution? If they are, you're doing it terribly, terribly wrong. Or are they maybe based on Alpine, Wolfie, or some other similar Linux distribution that is optimized for container images? If that is the case, then you are probably, but not certainly, doing it wrong. If they're based on scratch image, you are unequivocally doing it the right way. Let me explain. There are three main reasons why people might choose to use traditional Linux distributions as base container images. To begin with, there is misunderstanding what container images are. There is the need for tools to compile, build, test, and perform other similar operations. And there is the need for tools to debug applications when things go wrong. We will go through all of those, as well as the implications of making certain choices. When containers were popularized by Docker, many misunderstood the concepts behind them. Containers seemed like lightweight virtual machines, and many started using them as such. The most obvious proof of that can be observed through base images. If you're not familiar with the concept of base images, let me explain. Base images are, well, images we use as the base for our container images. They're in a way similar to Linux distributions we use on top of virtual machines. We would normally use Debian, Ubuntu, CentOS, or some other Linux distribution as the base for our virtual machines. And from there on, we would add whatever we need to run our applications or whatever we are running on those VMs. Container images follow the same model. Take a look at this example. This Docker file is meant to run an application written in Go. So the base image is Golang 120 Bookform. Now, Bookform is a release of Debian operating system. So that image effectively contains Debian with the addition of Go that allows me to compile and build my application. There are two big mistakes are made when writing the Docker file. Actually, there are more than two, but that's a good start. So that will allow me, allow us to discover others later. The first one is that I did not use multi-stage builds. That means that the source code I imported is available in the final image. I cannot compile my application without the source code, but once compiled, there is no good reason why source code should be available in the final image. My application runs as a binary, not directly from source code. The second mistake is that all the Go tools required to compile that binary, you know, those in the base image, are also available in the final image. Just as the source code, they are not required to run the application, hence they're waste. We can fix both of those issues with multi-stage builds. I'm not going to explain how multi-stage builds work since I already did that in that video. All I will say is that multi-stage builds is one of the most important features of container image builders, including, but not limited to, Docker. Without it, I would need to go through quite a few hoops to achieve the same result. So my improved Docker file looks like this. The final image will be based on Debian and will include only the binary of my application. Go tools are gone, and that's great, right? Well, that's slightly better, but it's still far from great. People thought that if they run their apps on top of a Linux distribution like Debian, Ubuntu, CentOS, it makes perfect sense to use those as base images for their containers as well. And that part, that is a terrible idea, terrible mistake. As I already mentioned, containers are not virtual machines. They do not need operating systems to run since they are already running on top of operating systems. All containers in a server share the same operating system. Hence, using Debian as the base image is a waste. Waste of what, you might ask? Let's take a look at my registry. This image, the top one is based on Debian, and you will notice that it is considerably larger than the other images. Now, you might say that the size of images is not important, but it is. 
Larger images occupy more space in registries and on virtual machine drives. Containers based on such images tend to have longer startup times and they tend to use more memory and CPU. Now, if none of those things are important to you because, well, you have money to burn, then you should know that such containers are also less secure. Base images like Debian, Ubuntu and CentOS contain stuff you do not need. And more stuff there is, the bigger the chance that some of those have vulnerabilities. The last three images I have in that registry are all based on latest base images. Yet, the top one, the one based on Debian, has 45 vulnerabilities and since it is based on the latest version of Debian, I cannot simply upgrade it to a newer version in hope of getting it fixed. As I already mentioned, the issue is that some might think that containers are like virtual machines, hence that they need a whole operating system to run. But that is not the case. Containers run inside operating systems already running on top of virtual machines. Hence, what containers need are only the things that are required to run our applications. So, what's the solution? The best option is to use Scratch as the base image. Scratch is almost empty. It has almost nothing. And nothing is good. Nothing does not occupy this space and nothing does not waste memory and CPU. Nothing does not have any security vulnerabilities. An image based on nothing, based on Scratch image, results in most optimal containers that contain only the stuff we add to it, typically only the application binary. Nevertheless, Scratch images do not work for everyone. They're great for the apps that compile into self-executable binaries, like for example, Go. But they can be a bit difficult to use for those that, for example, prefer writing their applications in Python and other languages that cannot be compiled to binaries. Now, a quick note here, I know that it is possible for most languages to compile to binaries, but that's often too painful or risky. So, if you cannot compile your app to an executable binary or if that's too complicated for your programming language, we can jump to the second best option, which is Alpine or Wolfie or Wolfie. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Those are not nothing, but their footprint is minimal and either of those is a great, great choice. As you can see, the second image from the top is based on Alpine and just as the one based on Scratch, it has zero vulnerabilities and it is only slightly bigger than the one based on Scratch. Now, unlike with Scratch, Alpine images are not guaranteed to have zero vulnerabilities. As a matter of fact, the older images in my registry were also based on Alpine, but it was an older version which did not have known vulnerabilities in the past, but the situation changed. New vulnerabilities were discovered, but fortunately the fix was easy. All I had to do to get rid of them is to use a newer version of Alpine. Now, before you say something like, great, Alpine gives me close to zero vulnerabilities, I can live with that. Keep in mind that detected vulnerabilities are only a part of what makes images insecure. The other part is the ability to do damage. If one manages to break into a container based on Alpine or Wolfie, they will be able to install tools they need and use those tools to do some damage. That's why Scratch is the best option for base images. There is no package manager one can use to install tools. There is no curl or wget one can use to download scripts. There is nothing except the bare minimum required to run an application, which in my case is a single binary. In your case, there might be more depending on the language of your application, but still, it's always more secure to run only the things you need than to have those that you don't. It's easier to start from nothing and add the stuff you need than to start with something and remove the things you do not need. Now, there is one more commonly used argument in favor of big images debugging or troubleshooting. You might say that it is okay to use Scratch or Alpine or Wolfie, Wolfie, whatever it's pronounced, for running applications packaged in container images as long as everything works as expected. But there are moments when you do need to 
enter inside containers to debug issues. And debugging requires tools. How are we going to do that if those containers do not have the tools we need? If they're based on Ubuntu, Debian, or CentOS, we can simply use a package manager to install those tools. We can do the same with Alpine or Wolfi, so there is still no good reason to switch to traditional operating systems like Ubuntu, Debian, or CentOS. But if your images are based on Scratch or nothing, we cannot use package manager to install the tools we need when we are faced with disasters. If there isn't even CURL or WGET, there is no way to download what we need. Just as using nothing prevents malicious sectors from doing damage, it also prevents us from being able to troubleshoot the issues. Now, I will skip the pep talk in which I explain how we should not debug issues by entering inside containers, but rather through observability tools based on metrics, traces, logs, log collectors, and events, and so on and so forth. I won't do that, not only because that would be outside the scope of this video, but also because there are actually cases when we do have to enter inside containers and when we do need special tools to debug issues. Those are very rare cases, but they do exist. So does that mean that scratch images are not a good idea? No, it does not. It means that you might not have discovered ephemeral containers which is the feature available in all Kubernetes clusters starting from version 1.26. I mean, that's when it went to GA, it was available before as well. Ephemeral containers allow us to troubleshoot or debug issues inside containers without having to build new images. They allow us to attach ephemeral containers to running pods and those containers can have all the tools we need. So instead of using container images filled with just in case, type of tools, we can use images that contain only the things we need to run our applications. And if we need to debug or troubleshoot something, we can attach ephemeral containers to running pods. Now, I will not go into details of what ephemeral containers are right now, since that is not the focus of this video. Now, the question for you is, would that be something you would like to see? If any of you watching this video says, Yes, I'll make it the subject of the next one. It's a promise. Let me know in the comments. Going back to base images. Do not use debugging and troubleshooting as an excuse to bloat your images with stuff that is not required for your applications to run. There is no excuse. All in all, try using Scratch as the base image and only and exclusively, if that does not work or it is too complicated, use Alpine or Wolfy. Do not, and I repeat, do not use Debian, Ubuntu, CentOS, or any other image based on Linux distribution you might normally use for your virtual machines before you switched to containers. Heck, you should not use those even for virtual machines, but that is a story for some other time. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Cheers.